All right, Shalom. I want to start by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hope of the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harakak And um, in this lesson, what I want to um, go into is uh, the destruction that's coming upon this place and uh, how the Lord is going to be with us. And this was inspired by a lesson that I saw from the priest Shaman out in uh, New York. Um, his page is GMS Bread and Olive. And um, the title of his lesson was GMS A Dream of Lawlessness. And Lord's will, I'll put it in the description box. But just in case I forget, uh, you could um, you could type it in. Hopefully it ain't too blurry. All right, but anyways, in his lesson, he went into a dream that he had, and it was pretty much like a purge scenario. All right, a lot of people had weapons and, and, and guns, and, and uh, it was a lot of violence that was going on from what I recall from the lesson. And um, a scripture that was prevalent in my mind during that time or listening to the lesson was this Psalms 23 and 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. All right. And we're already in that shadow of death here in America, man. Death is all around us from all aspects. All right. From a physical perspe perspective or right, from the foods that we're eating all right, the GMO foods that's bringing forth death. Right. Uh, the violence that's already here in this land. All right. You could die by somebody shooting you, gunning you down. The police can come and kill you, whatever the case may be, man. Death is all around us, all right? But not only that, from um, a spiritual perspective as well, all right? It says the wages of sin is death. So even the things that are, uh, the philosophies that are pumped up in, uh, pumped into this society, into the minds of these people, all of it leads to death. But what's going to happen is as we get closer to the coming of Yahweh uh, Shai, the death is going to increase, man, all right? The violence is going to increase, all right? The Lord is going to be putting the spirit of vengeance upon these different uh, individuals, all right, whether it's people, animals, or whatever the case may be, to execute the Lord's righteous indignation upon the wicked of uh, the wicked, man. All right, but it says, "Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil." And the reason why, all right, one of the reasons that we don't have to fear the evil, which is just bad times, the bad times to come, is because the Lord is going to be with us, and the evils that are coming, all right, is for the wicked. All right, this is the book of Psalms, or Salaki, not Psalms, but the book of Sirach. Chapter uh, 40 and verse 9, it says, death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation and the scourge. Right. And this is pretty much all right, uh, a visual or a scripture given a, um, a scripture showing you the different things, the, uh, the atmosphere that's going to be here, man. All right. Pr pretty much the atmosphere of straight death. That's why it says in the book of Second Ezra. And this is all through the spirit. I just had that uh, that Psalms you know, uh, on my mind. And so whatever the spirit gives me, I'm gonna bring it out, Lord's will. All right, but this is, this is the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter in verse uh, 17. It says, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. So we're entering into that time of great death, man, where people are gonna be dropping dead all right, from uh, pestilence, man, natural disasters, Right from the famine, from the swore, martial law troops, all these things are coming uh, uh, and they're right around the corner, man. All right. A time of great death. Right. It says uh, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? That's right. So this is only the beginning of the strife, the sword, the famine, the tribulation. Right. The scourges, which is punishments. Right. But what does it say back in that Sirach chapter 30, uh, Sirach chapter 40? In verse nine, it says death and bloodshed, death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood. Right. So all these things are for who? For the wicked. Right. That's why we don't have to fear what's to come, because as long as we're walking in a way that's pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Shemi Shai, right, we are going to be covered. That's why it says here in the book of Second Measures, the 16th chapter, it says, um, Verse 74, it says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. So here it is, the Lord is promises, promising us that he's going to deliver us from all of these 
judgments and punishments that are going to come down upon the wicked, man. That's why it says in the book of Proverbs, let me go ahead and hit this real quick. Lord, will I remember to hit and go back to that Psalms. But this is Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked. Right? So it says the desolation of who? Of the wicked. Right? It says, when it cometh, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. That's right. So once again, this is the desolation for the wicked. So if we've been walking in a way that's pleasing unto Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, we're going to be straight, man. But everybody else that's not uh, uh, fighting, all right, the good fight of faith, okay, that's trying to abstain from wickedness, they're going to be um, overtaken by these things and the Lord is going to leave them in these plagues, man, to suffer. That's why it says um, in 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, it says that uh, the Lord will have these people to dwell in torments, man. All right, so the Lord's mind is set forth to bring all types of judgments upon these uh, 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 the wicked, all right? And this is what we're trying to escape through the mercy of the Lord. Uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, it says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him. Right, and if we fear Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, what is that going to bring forth? What does the fear of the Lord bring forth? All right. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 1 and verse 21. It says, The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. So this time of great wrath that the Lord is bringing upon this place, all right, it's going to overpass who? Those that fear the Lord, because that fear is going to drive away sins, drive away doing things that aren't pleasing in the eyes of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. I got a precept written next to it. I want to check it out real quick, see if it ties in. All right, Proverbs 16, let us say, Proverbs chapter 16 and 6, let's see what that's talking about, just bear with me, all right, this is uh, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 6, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil, so that's right, so through the fear of the Lord, we're going to depart from doing wickedness, man. And therefore, the Lord is going to have favor upon us through his mercy, man. All right. Going back to, um, let's see. I read that in Proverbs. Where was that? Salakia. Uh, okay, I read that Sirach. All right, I'm going to just go back to uh, the second Ezra. So I just kind of lost my place. All right, but second Ezra chapter uh, 16 and verse... Um. 74 here O ye my beloved said the lord behold the days of trouble are at hand but i will deliver you from the same and that's right i was reading ecclesiastes all right so the lord is going to deliver all right his uh his um chosen his elect which we're hopeful members of from all these things that are to come man you know what? i'm gonna read one more verse and then finish that ecclesiastes it says it says uh verse 75 be ye not afraid neither doubt for the most high is your guide and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Right. So those that are trying to keep these words, apply these uh, scriptures uh, to their lives, man, or probably apply these precepts, what's going to happen, man? The Lord is going to guide them and direct them through the midst of all these things, man. Okay. Through all the calamities that are going to come upon this place, man. It says, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. That's right. Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. That's why I keep mentioning that it comes down ultimately into the mercy of the Lord. And this is what we're fighting for. But the Lord gives us the guidelines of those that are that will obtain mercy, man. All right, here's an example in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 7. All right, go back to Ecclesiastes. All right, All right Isaiah 55 and 7. It says, I'm going to start at 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Right. So we have to put the old man to the side. Right. That's why Yahweh Shai told Nicodemus all right, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have to. We have to be uh, born again. All right. That means what? Becoming a new creature. How do we become a new creature? By the renewing of our mind. All right. So instead of reasoning and thinking how we used to being niggas, now we're filtering our thoughts and our reasonings through these precepts because this is what's pleasing unto the Lord. In the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter says that those the things that are pleasing unto the Lord are was made uh, is made known unto us. So now we know that path, man, and that's a blessing in itself. You got people in the Christian churches that are accepting sodomites that are saying, "Yeah, just come as you are. The Lord loves you anyway." And this and that, and the third, no matter what you're doing, and 
X, Y, and Z. All right. They're pushing out that message and they think that the Lord is actually uh, pleased with that, man. Except inside of me and so on and so forth, man. No, Yahweh Shah, when he was on the scene, he said, Lest ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So all those people that are living wicked lifestyles, right? That aren't turning from those things, man. Still going after that, that wickedness. What's going to happen? The Lord is going to fulfill his word and cause them to perish. All right. Get messed up in these plagues, man. So that's why we have to put away the old man, as it's pretty much saying here in Isaiah. Isaiah 55 and 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our power he will abundantly pardon. So those that are doing those things, forsaking their own way, all right, not going after their own heart, but leaning upon these precepts, doing these things, right? Those are the ones who are going to receive that pardon. So the Lord gives us a clear, uh, has given a straight commandment of, of what we should do to uh, to avoid punishment. Like it says in second Ezra, I believe that's the seventh chapter that I just quoted. All right. So going back to the book of Ecclesiastes, the eighth, the eighth chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter eight and verse 12, it says, though, it's, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the most high, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow because he feared not before the most high. So because the wicked... All right, it's not fearing Yahweh Shemi Shai. They don't believe that the Lord is going to bring these judgments, like it says in the book of Amos, the ninth chapter, Amos chapter nine, and verse ten. It says, "All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us." So all the wicked of our people that think that the Lord isn't going to bring in these judgments, they are going to be overtaken by the martial law, by the plagues, by the famine. All right, by the pestilences and so on and so forth. Right. The Lord is going to give them over to those things, man. And like I like I mentioned, I quoted it. I'll go ahead and bring it out. The Lord is going to leave them in these plagues, man. But to those that are walking up rightly before him to the best of their ability, hey, the Lord is going to guide us, man. All right. Through these things. All right. Uphold us, man. Strengthen our heart through these trials and tribulations that we're going to go into. It says that in the book of Psalms twice, man, that the Lord will strengthen our heart. All right. So, you know, you might even deal with certain nervousness going into these times, man. You know, as your faith is being increased. But the scripture says the Lord will strengthen uh, our heart, man. All right. So he's going to give us the capacity to endure these things, man. He's going to keep us uh, uh, from the hour of temptation, man. All right. Giving us the spirit to endure. This is all of Yahweh Shai. This isn't of our might, of our own strength. This is all through the Lord giving us the spirit, all right, to uh, endure these things, man. Like he did with the woman in um, the, the Maccabees mother in 2 Maccabees, the seventh chapter. The Lord filled her with courageous spirit. All right. That's what it said. The Lord filled her with courageous spirits. So the Lord is going to put another spirit upon us to endure these things, man. Okay. We just have to trust in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. This is the book of uh, Second Ezra chapter 15 and 24. It says, woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Right. And the person will be like, well, we've all sinned. Like I quoted the scripture, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. But in the book of Psalms, the 32nd chapter says, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Right. So there's particular spirits whom the Lord is going to uh, um, pardon their iniquities, man. All right. But to get that pardon, to show that we're a part of those that will receive that pardon, we have to be walking in the fear of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right. That's why the scripture says put on, therefore, as the elect. We can't walk around and be like, oh, OK, well, shoot. I'm probably one of the ones that's going to get pardoned anyway, so I can go do whatever the hell I want. Nah, that's not a person that walks in the fear of the Lord. That shows that that person is not of the elect because the elect is going to have the fear of the Lord and it's going to drive away sins, you know? So we have to continue to do what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord, man. But anyways, 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and uh, verse uh, 25, it says, I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power to defile not my sanctuary. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. So the masses of these people are going to be delivered right into death and destruction, man. All right. It says, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. Right. What does that mean? The Lord is not going to deliver them. Well, it says it. It says, for the most high shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against him. So the Lord's mindset towards the majority of these people is that he's going to allow them to suffer and dwell in torments in these coming uh, uh, coming days, man. All right. But like we read in that Psalms, man, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though death and destruction is all around us, we have nothing to fear. 
Why? Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is with us in his mind, as it says in the book of Jeremiah. All right. Jeremiah chapter 20. Is it 29 and 11? Yep, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So the Lord, mind, his mind towards his elect, his servants, are those that believe in him, that are applying these words right, his mind towards them are peace, all right? Not of evil, not to destroy us, all right? But to what? To deliver us from these things, man. Yeah, we're going to be tried. Yeah, we're going to go through different trials and tribulations. We're going to earn our crown through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shah. All right, but the Lord is going to be with us, man. Okay, the Lord is Salaki. The Lord is with us, and He's going to continue to be with us in the midst of all the uh, judgments to come, man. All right, so let's go. Uh, I want to grab this in the Book of Sirach, the thirty-nine chapter. All right, Sirach chapter thirty-nine and verse. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse twenty-eight. It says, "There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of Him that made them." All right, so that's what we're going to witness, man. The wrath of the Lord being poured out. All right, even right now, you have a, a heavier spirit of violence upon the people here in America and throughout the world, man. Okay, I've seen different reports of uh, crime increasing throughout the nation. All right, because of the stress and the different things that are happening. But ultimately, it's because the wrath of the Lord is being poured out, man. More people are killing one another. All right, it says the love of many shall wax cold, man. All right. Hey, and the brother brought it out earlier in our group chat when you go into that word, uh, uh, that phrase wax cold in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. Uh, it's the Greek word psycho, man. All right. So a lot of these people are going psycho, man. They're going crazy. But what that but what that is the uh, the spirit of vengeance upon these people, man. All right. The judgment of the Lord, man. When we're getting raped more. All right. This is the reality, man. OK. People killing one another, man. See, these are the things that we're going to be walking in the midst of, man. That's why it says, that's why it's called the valley of the shadow of death, man. It's going to be all around us, man. But even though it's going to be all around us, what does it say in the book of Psalms, the 91st chapter? It says, uh, Psalms 91 and verse uh, 7, it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So once again, this is the reward of the wicked that we're going to see. But it's going to be all around us, man. All right. I haven't seen people killed all right, in front of me, man. All right. I haven't heard women in the alley being raped and this and that and the third. I haven't experienced those things, man. A lot of us haven't experienced that type of death and destruction all around us, man. A lot of times when people go through different experiences like that, it's, tra it's traumatizing, man. Well, think about it. All those, uh, all the people that go off to war, or right, when the people come, when uh, people soldiers go off to war and they come back, a lot of them have what post traumatic uh, stress di disorder, man. All right, they wake up hearing gunshots, man. They start tweaking, bugging out. They have all types of different symptoms just from the trauma of witnessing and hearing certain things, man. Right. So imagine if that happens when people go off to war. Imagine how it's going to be for people when war is on American soils, man. All right. When people are actually hearing and witnessing these things, man. All right. Children getting eaten, right, by their parents. These are different things that have happened in history. And these are different things that the scriptures prophesy are going to happen here in this land, man. All right. These things can be traumatizing. But what the Lord is going to, once again, strengthen our heart. And this is the reward of the wicked, man. The Lord is going to have a spirit that's so heavy on us to where it says in the book of Proverbs, the first chapter, that we're going to laugh at their calamity. We're going to mock when their fear cometh, man. All right. That's what that's the spirit that the Lord is going to have on us, man. I can't tell you that I got that spirit right now to sit there and laugh at a, uh, <laughs> a child being dashed to pieces, man, or different things, man, you know. But yet the Lord is going to strengthen our heart through these things, man, to where we aren't fearing, to where our faith is on a whole nother level, man. That's what it's going to be. The Lord increasing our faith to a whole nother level to where we can endure these coming calamities. But it says back in Sirach chapter 39 and verse uh, 28 again, there be spirits that are created for vengeance within which in their fury lay on sore strokes in the time of destruction. They pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them fire and hail and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts, scorpions, ser uh, serpents and the sword. <laughs> Punishing the wicked to destruction. Key key uh, phrase there. Punishing what? 
the wicked to destruction. So once again, this is all for the wicked, man. All right. This is all for the wicked, man. So we have to fight to be not found out being wicked. All right. Just walking in the way that's pleasing in the eyes of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, which we learned through these scriptures, man. Applying these lessons, man. It says, uh, they shall rejoice in this commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So this is what we're going to be in the midst of, man. All right. But like we're reading here or started off with in the book of Psalms. All right. Psalms chapter 30. Uh, I'm sorry. Psalms 23. And for, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, so even though all these things are around us, what does it say? I will fear no evil. Why is that? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now the rod and the staff is an allegory for these scriptures, for these precepts. In the book of Micah, it says, hear ye the rod and who hath appointed it. Meaning what? Take heed unto these scriptures, man. Right? The staff is what? An instrument used for correction. The scripture says in the book of Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, uh, uh, I believe, correction or instruction in righteousness. So all that is talking about the scriptures. So when we're in the midst of all these things, these precepts are going to be in our mind to comfort us, man. All right. That's why it says in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the eighth chapter. All right. And this is a, a, a show because Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. It is written of him. See, even the fact that we can have these precepts coming into our mind, all right, to strengthen us, all right, to do these lessons and so on and so forth. That's showing you that the Lord is with us. That's Yahweh Shai through the spirit or right, through the working of the Holy Spirit of the angels feeding us with comfort, feeding us with precepts, right? So he is with us, man. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. <coughs> Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. In verse. Um, in cares and grief. So lucky. I want to. Yep. Wisdom of Solomon 8 in verse 9. It says, therefore, I purpose to take her to me to live with me. And the herd that he's speaking of is wisdom. It says, knowing that she will be a counselor of good things and a comfort in cares and grief. So this is going to comfort us in this time of calamity, just like it comforts us now in our cares and griefs, dealing with anxiety or whatever the case may be. These precepts is what strengthen us and comforts us through these things, man. It says in the book of Psalms, this is my comfort and mine affliction, right? So this is what's going to get us through. All right, these uh, these uh, times that we're coming into, man. All right, knowing that the Lord is comforting us through these precepts. All right, hey, the scripture says in the book of Second uh, Maccabees that we have the holy uh, the holy scriptures to comfort us, man. So this is it. This is the comforter. All right, but anyways, going back to that Psalms uh, twenty three and four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. All right, the scripture says that the Lord Yahweh Shai will be with us even unto the end of the world. And he is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that shall repent. Shall he say it and shall he not bring it to pass? So if the Lord says that he's with us into the end of the world, he's with us into the end of the world, man. That's why it says in the book of Isaiah, the 40, the, the 51st chapter, says, fear not thou worm Jacob, for I am with thee. All right. Let me go ahead and hit that. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse... Uh, okay, it wasn't 51. It might be 49. Salaki, bear with me. Man, I'm trying to remember where it's at. Yeah, all right. I'm. Nah, I can find it through the Spirit of the Lord as well. Yep, Isaiah 41 and verse uh, 10 it says, Fear thou not. For I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy power. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with thy right hand and my righteousness. So that's it, all right? So here it is. What do we have to worry about? The Lord's like, hey, don't trip. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to uphold you. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. Uh, uh, do that for you. So the Lord isn't going to lie, man. He, he, has, he has to make this happen. He's not going to stain his reputation by uh, by not uh, fulfilling his word. Here it is. The Lord has fulfilled all his word, right? Throughout the ages, he's fulfilled prophecies, all these promises that he's made, man. He promised that we were going to captivity. Our ashes is here in captivity. He promised that over a thousand years ago, all right, that we would come here on slave ships, man. He told that he told that to our, our forefathers in the wilderness, 
All right. Over a hundred. I can't, I can't remember the math on it. Hundreds of years later. All right. From the time of Moses all the way to the time that we got on them slave ships, the Lord fulfilled that word. All right. So the Lord, trust me, the Lord will trust what the scriptures say. All right. The Lord is not lying about nothing. So if he ain't lying about everything else, we think he going to fold on a promise of being with us. All right. Protecting us, keeping us. We, hey, man, got to be out of your mind if you think the Lord ain't going to fulfill these words, man. All right. So everything that he promised, he's going to bring it to pass. So let me keep reading. It says, behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. And we already see that happening now, man. All these people that were talking shit came up against us. Now they're being made ashamed. Look at what's happening to Polite, man. All right. He was incensed against us. He came up against us. What? Now he's being made ashamed. Look at what's happening to these other groups, man. All right. The Lord is making, <laughs> he's uh, 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 confounding them, man. All of our enemies. All right. Through the spirit and power, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. It says, they shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, Yahweh, thy power will, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Right. So the Lord likens us into a worm. Right. A worm is an animal that has no defense. Right. All the worm can do is wiggle around. All right. The worm ain't got no fangs. If the enemy comes in, he can. All right. Strike him. All right. The worm ain't got no camouflage to where he can, you know, hide away from the enemy. Nah, the worm is just out there <laughs> and through. Right. But why does it say it says or what does it say? It says, fear not thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee. So the Lord is like, look, I'm going I'm to take care of you. Okay. I'm going to look out for you. You can't do shit anyways, all right? I'm going to be there to, uh, to deliver you, man. We can't do nothing against Esau, man. This nigga got drones. This nigga got all types of mech. He got, I mean, he got the blessing of the sword, man, all right? We can't defeat this devil carnally, man. And that's the beauty of what the Lord is uh, doing right now, man. See, we're a nation that if we're a nation to where it looks like from a carnal standpoint, we can't get delivered out of any of these things, but yet the Lord is going to show forth his might and his power by defending us. That's how the Lord is going to be exalted, all right, by defending us, man. We ain't got no standing army. We ain't got shit, but yet <laughs> we're going to be the ones <laughs> that get delivered by the angels, angelic forces, chariots, all right, so on and so forth, man. It says, fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, Yahweh, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thrust the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as shafts. So at the end of the day, the Lord is going to endow all right, his men with power. All right. Power beyond what this devil has anyways, man. Spiritual power. All right. That this devil fantasizes about having, man. He's going to give it to us just like that. Just based off of the faith that the Lord has imparted into us, man. Okay. But uh, let me go back to that in the book of Psalms and we're going to end it off Lord's will. All right, Psalm chapter 23. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 23 and verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my, my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahweh by Hashem, I will shine forever. But that's it, man. You know, through the spirit, Lord's will that lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, or Kakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great mill, song and rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.